My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. At the end of this PCC Image Tools Part 2 Image Processing Made Easy tutorial, you will be able to use the many different image processing tools incorporated in PCC. These image processing techniques can be applied to the entire recording, alone or in combination, to bring out hidden features and details. The type of effects available will be dependent upon the camera model and type, monochrome or color, the cine or images were recorded from, along with how the camera was set to record the cine. Not all image processing techniques are appropriate for every image. Vision Research recommends you experiment with the image processing effects to find the best enhancements for your needs. When using a monitor to apply image processing effects, the white balance control and all brightness, contrast, gamma, and color adjustments should be changed only when using a monitor that is in a correct adjustment. Occasionally, an operator will over adjust the monitor settings in extreme lighting conditions such as in direct sunlight in an attempt to get a better look at what he or she is trying to image. Correcting the appearance of images on a poorly adjusted monitor will have a negative result on sitting recordings that will later be reviewed on a properly adjusted monitor under normal conditions. Before I move on to the tone selector, I'm going to close the Hypo 3 Cine and open the Tone Curve Demo Cine. I'm also going to reset the histogram to gray. Close the advanced adjustment selector and open the tone selector. Tone allows for manual control over the tone curve of the image. Tone curves change the shadows to highlights relationship between the original values on the x-axis and resulting values on the y-axis. Tone curves can be useful to boost mid-tones of an image without affecting highlights or shadows, for example. They could also be used to push the darks lower, which may result in richer images when details in the shadows are not required. There is a relationship with the overall image gamma, which is a predefined curve and is equivalent of REC 709. Several points can be added along the curve, and as each point is placed between the values of 0 and 1, the software averages the curve along the points that have been placed. To create a tone curve, I first need to enter a name for the curve being created in the Label Data Entry field. For this tutorial, I'm going to enter the name Darks. Now I'm going to right-click where I want to add a point on the curve. Notice the software adds a small crosshair with a point number where I place the point. I'm going to add three points. Notice as I drag the first point below the curve, the image shadows get darker, and as I drag it above the curve, they get brighter. Notice as I drag the second point below the curve, the image midtones get darker, and as I drag it above the curve, they get brighter. and as I drag the third point below the curve the image highlights get darker and as I drag it above the curve they get brighter. Now I'm going to fine-tune the curve to achieve the desired result. If I needed to I could have added more points. The software has also created a tone table with the points I've added and their X and Y values. I could, if I wanted to, adjust the curve by selecting an existing point and changing the X and Y values, or I could add points by entering the X and Y values in the line indicated by the asterisk. The software even allows me to delete a line by selecting the line to be deleted 
and depressing the delete key on the control computer. I'm going to reset the tone curve by clicking the tone reset button and close the tone table. I'm also going to close the tone curve demo city and open the three frame xylo city and open the color matrix selector. The color matrix is an advanced color matching tool which previously was reserved for video engineers to match the HD SDI output of cameras in a broadcast environment. A user matrix can be specified and saved to fine-tune the color of both the Cine images and the HD SDI output. By adjusting the user matrix, the images can be finely tuned so that individual colors can be adjusted in terms of tint and saturation. A common use for this is to accurately match the color with another camera on the same shoot. First, a name must be created and a color matrix number must be chosen. Up to four matrices can be specified and saved in certain phantom camera models to be recalled at another time. As you can see, I can only apply one color matrix. This is because I'm applying the color matrix to a saved cine file. The interface can be read from left to right top to bottom. The first row of blocks lets me select how much red to add to the green channel, red to green, and the blue channel, red to blue. The second row lets me select how much green to add to the red channel, green to red, and the blue channel, green to blue. And the last row Let's me enter how much blue to add to the red channel, blue to red, and finally to the green channel, blue to green. The fields that are grayed out will be averaged automatically to give proper results. The new matrix is added on top of the other color and image adjustments, and the settings will be saved to the Cine and applied when opened. Before continuing, I'm going to close the color matrix selector, close the three frame silo Cine, and open the Spray 5 Cine. I'm also going to advance the Cine a little and open the Geometry and Overlay selector. This area of the Image Tools menu allows for the Change in Orientation, Overlay a Grid or Crosshair, Crop, Resample, and the setting of a Production Area. I can change the orientation of the Cine horizontally vertically, rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees or clockwise 90 degrees, or I can apply multiple options. I can also overlay a grid pattern or a crosshair over the images that are not saved to the Cine during the save Cine or conversion processes. The crop and resample functions are very valuable tools to help improve the image quality and composition of the shot. Also, by cropping the shots prior to conversion, smaller file sizes will be saved. There are a couple ways that I can crop the cine images. The first method is to draw a rectangle over the area of the displayed image and select the crop preview command from the pop-up window. This will allow me to see the area that will be retained or cropped when the save or conversion process is performed. The second method is to select the crop command from the pop-up window that will crop the displayed images that will be saved during the save or conversion processes. The crop enable box, when enabled, crops the images or restores the images to their original size when disabled and the Hide Crop Rectangle Enable box turns off and on the Crop Rectangle. The third method is to select an Output Resolution Preset from the pull-down selection list, which will automatically crop and resample the Cine images in combination with the fourth option. The fourth method is to manually enter in the X and Y coordinates of the upper left hand corner pixel of the crop rectangle and the width by height of the crop rectangle and enable the crop tool 
to crop the images. It's important to note that the CineRaw file saves the crop and resample images as metadata only, and the CineRaw file is never affected until the shot is converted to another format. Before I move on, I'm going to reset the crop parameters to X0, Y0, width 640, and height 304, and disable both the crop and resample functions. And just in case I missed any other adjustment settings I may have made to the Cine, I'm going to click the default button. To resample the Cine images, I need to enter in the width by height in pixels I want the images to resize to. I'm going to set this to half the original image size, 320 by 152. This feature is extremely beneficial when shooting at larger resolutions and only wanting to output at smaller resolutions. For example, shooting at a full 4 megapixel resolution and only wanting to output it at 1920 by 1080. The resulting resampled images will be a bit sharper and the full 35 millimeter format will be maintained. Now, let me just reset the image adjustments by clicking the default button. To continue, I have to select one of the cameras, so I'm going to close the Spray 5 Cine file and open the Mero 320S Cam 2 camera in a play panel. I also need to make a couple changes to the Cine settings, just as I did in the Capturing Your First Cine tutorial. Now we can move on to the production area. The production area allows for a 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 guide to be placed on top of the full image resolution when the hide rectangle function is disabled or unchecked. This image tool is useful when intentionally recording at a larger resolution than the final output resolution as an overscan. This allows you to frame the shot very closely while watching the perimeter of the frame. The production area can be offset from the center by adjusting the X and Y coordinates. And brought back to the center using the center production area button. For this last little bit, I'm going to close the Miro 320S Cam 2 play panel and reopen the chip cine file. At the bottom of the Image Tools dialog window, there are four buttons. The Disable button temporarily turns off any image adjustments. Clicking it again re-enables the image adjustments applied. The Save button saves the image tool settings to a user-specified file location. The Load button recalls and applies the saved image tool settings saved in the user-specified file. And the Default button is used to reset all image tools adjustments back to the factory default settings except for white balance, tone, and color matrix settings which have their own reset buttons. Since we're finished, I'm going to close the image tools dialog window and the chip cine file. So that concludes the PCC image tools image processing tutorials where you learned how to apply the image processing techniques incorporated in PCC and the benefits they bring. For in-depth Phantom Operations, Vision Research offers Phantom Operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com Service Support Training or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull-down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for Phantom Cameras in general.